Good morning. Now Sunday we had problems with our uh, equipment here. So I'm having to redo this teaching that I did Sunday. And uh, hopefully by next Sunday we'll have all this fixed. I'm sorry that you have to... Uh, well, that's not a bad picture to look at while you're listening. Maybe some of y'all would rather look at that than me. But anyway. Part 3 of Deception. How the devil deceives us. Christians. Last week we saw that the Lord said that he was crafty. And he is crafty. In fact, to be crafty, he also has to be clever. He's got... he. He doesn't make it obvious of what he's doing to us or trying to do to us. He already has lost people. So he's working on Christians. He's working on Christians that are trying to live for the Lord. He doesn't want Christians to live for the Lord. The devil has always wanted to worship. And he's got a lot of people worshiping him. But Christians... The Lord has opened our eyes and we see there's only one that we worship. And that's the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Christians that are being deceived. The Lord says they're doing things without knowing. Accepting things without knowing. It, they might have it in their mind, but they, but they don't have it in their heart. The heart is where things happen. You have it in your mind, you know it, but when you put it in your heart, you live it. I hope you understand what I'm saying. A lot of people, they live for Jesus in their mind, but not in their heart. And this is what we call religion. This is what the religious leaders did in the time of Jesus, and that's why they crucified him. Because they wanted all the attention to go to them and not to Jesus. They didn't live by the Word of God. They kind of lived by the Word of God, but they always put their little, what they thought was better or whatever. Matthew chapter 22, verse 29 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. There's a lot of people who go to church and never read the Bible. They do err, the Lord says. They make, that's a mistake. We have preachers and teachers that have the gift of teaching. But we still need to check them out. Because we're going to find out there's many, many wolves out there preaching or teaching. And the reason we err is because we don't check the one we're listening to. We don't check them out. To see if he's preaching the word of God and not taking the scriptures out of context of what the Lord meant for them to mean. We need to realize that we have been deceived and we have to understand and believe that the, of the power of God, which is the Holy Spirit, can show us nothing but truth. He's just going to show us truth. These false preachers and teachers, they're all they're going to show you is lies. So it's, imp it's important that we know the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God that lives in us. We have to learn how to use that Spirit that the Lord has given us. We need to use it to give us power and understanding of the Word of God. We need to wake up and realize there's a lot, a lot of deception going on in the world and in the church. Remember, we were dead not knowing him. We were dead. It was in the earlier teaching, uh, I showed that we we're walking zombies. Yes, we're alive physically, but the Lord says we're dead until we, receive, until we receive him in our heart. And that's when he said, I am the life. He is the life. And you don't have no life until you accept Jesus in your heart. Amen. Praise God. So we need to wake up. In fact, the Lord says in Isaiah, Chapter 60, verses 1 and 2. The Lord says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. What he's saying, wake up, dead people, wake up. 
I am here. I have come into the world. He came physically and now he comes spiritually. Amen. And it says, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. How oh, praise God. Those who receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Redeemer, their Savior, their King, their Lord. He has come upon us. He has come upon us to give us power to walk through this wicked world that we live in that belongs to Satan. And I've shown that already also. And then in verse 2, For behold, the darkness, which it means another word for deception, shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Now this gross darkness is spoken about it's very ugly, it's very wicked, it's very awful. That's what deception does to our life. This is, we don't realize it, but that's what it brings our life. But the Lord said, Arise, arise, accept him, and let the glory of God be seen in you. Because he says, he's upon us. He's upon us. And when he's upon us, meaning when we're walking with him in the scriptures and the words of God, people can see. People can see the Lord. They're not looking at us. They knew the old us, but the new us, they don't know. Because they're looking at the Lord. They're looking at Jesus Christ that is in us. Amen. Praise God. He told us again in the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Praise the Lord. Amen. Wake up, you dead people. Dead people are the people that are not living for the Lord. Dead people are the ones who reject Jesus. Reject Jesus and his words. The Lord says, Wake up. Wake up. Let me come upon you. Let me show you how to live. Let me guide you. Amen. Praise the Lord. This darkness of deception will not take us, like I said, if we arise and shine in him, in the Lord. We can't ourselves in the flesh. We can't. We have no brightness. We have no glory. But when we're walking with the Lord Jesus Christ, his glory shines upon us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now those of us who have received the Lord, we have, we have gone to where we've let his light go out. His light go out. We're not shining as Christians. There's no longer any excitement of being a child of God. Most Christians are being like the church. And I explain that through Revelation chapter 2, verse 2 through 5. And Jesus is speaking to the church here. In verse 2 he says, this is Jesus speaking, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how often canst thou bear them which are evil? And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And this, is what the, this is what Jesus is saying to the members of the church. And he's, he's, he's praising them for this for this right now in verse 3 and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not faded faded Jesus is praising the church amen praise God when Jesus praises the church for their faithfulness they show that they're waiting on him that's what they were showing they were doing the works of God and waiting on him he was praising them but they're against sin. They have tested those who say they're apostles and found them to be false teachers, like Jesus warned us to do, which we have already read in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. He said to be aware of false preachers and teachers. That they look like Christians, but inside they are wolves. And, he, and we're going to see that he says that there's many. There's many wolves. We have to be very, very careful on who we listen to. Just because a man has the title of pastor, priest, 
preacher, teacher, just because they have this title, that does not mean they're a man of God. We need to check them out because there's many wolves. He tells us in 2 John, verse 7, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. We'll recognize them when they speak to us. You can't look at them and recognize them. But when they start to speak to us and they're not using the scriptures, the words of God, and they're going off on some other gospel, that's when you can tell, uh, this is not a man of God. And he says back in verse 10, he says, not to even let him in your house. Amen? Not to let him in your house. Jesus says these things to the church, and he tells them how they have fallen, how they have failed him. In verse 4, he says, Never, even though they've done all, of this, all this stuff, but he says in verse 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. This is what Jesus is telling the church that's doing all these church things, being religious, doing the church things. They're doing it with the wrong attitude. They're doing it as a program, as a tradition of the church. They're not doing it with love, with the love of Jesus. Amen. We need the love of Jesus and to have the right motives on why we do these things that the Lord has shown us to do. Not because we, we belong to an organization, and that's what a lot of churches are. It's just an organization. People gathering together on Sundays or Saturdays. Church is a group of believers. It's not a building. Like I said, the worst thing that's ever happened to their church is when they put it in a building. These buildings, you got churches all over the place on many corners and people that drive by on Sunday, they don't give a heck what's going on in that church. They don't care. But in the time of Jesus, when church was in the homes, amen, when it was in the homes, it said people got saved daily, daily, because it was in the homes, in the neighborhood where people got out and spoke to other people. I hope you understand what I'm saying. But he said, we've left our first love. He said, to, he said this to the Israelites in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Jeremiah is speaking how they, how they have lost their first love for the Lord. In verse 1, the Lord gave me another message, he said. Jeremiah said, the Lord has given me this message to give to you. Verse 2, go and shout this message to Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. I remember how eager you were to please me as a young bride long ago. How you loved me and followed me even through the barren willingness, meaning through sufferings. They followed him. And that's the way we should be. No matter what, we should always follow the Lord. If we keep that first love for him. They got away from the first love. And these sufferings and tribulations that started coming around, they started complaining. They started to get away from the Lord. Now he's speaking to Jews here, but he's also speaking to us. Jesus says, I remember when you first came to know me and what I did for you, how you loved me, how I was willing to please you even through the hard times. We were willing to please him, please him even through the hard times. Amen. You got to remember, for true born again Christians, I say this because this is what happened to me. When you get truly born again, you're excited. You're very excited because you've seen that you were lost and going to hell. Now you're saved and going to heaven. Me, myself, I love the Lord because of how he suffered and all what he went through to save me. That I can have forgiveness of sin and that's why I love him. Going to heaven, that's a bonus for me. I'm glad I'm going to heaven, but I live for the Lord because how he suffered. As a man, many men today could not have gone 
through what Jesus went through back then. The Lord tells us how we how we lost this first he, he tells us how we lost this first love. And it's because of sin. Matthew 24, verse 11 through 12. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. He keeps saying there's many out there. So people, please pay attention to this teaching from the Lord, not from me. The Lord gives it to me and then I give it to y'all. Amen. In verse 12. And because iniquity, which means sin, shall abound, which means grow. The love of many shall wax cold. The love of many shall wax cold. He's talking about Christians. This is how Christians lose their first love. <sighs> the world and Christians, to them, sin is no longer sin. In fact, we laugh at sin. Christians. I mean, the world does for sure, but we Christians, we laugh at sin when we see it on TV. Like friends. I mean, that's a funny show, but it's all adultery on there. There's nothing but sin on that show. And there's many other shows just like that. But Christians watch those and they think it's funny and they laugh at it. This is what's causing us to lose our first love that we had. Because we're accepting sin into our, into our life. We're looking at it. And that old saying, garbage in, garbage out. That's a true saying. Verse 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. And repent. And do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly. And will remove thy candlestick out of his place. Except thou repent. Now the candlestick. That's the Lord. He is the light. Like a candlestick. But he said he will remove himself. Think about it. When we truly love him and what happened when we started to go back and lost that first love, we started to go back to the way we used to live. See, the Jews, when they were in the wilderness and God was taking totally, total care of them. But they weren't living the way they were. And they started complaining and they started saying, we need to go back to Egypt. When there, where there were slaves. But they wanted to go back to that. We have Christians today. They pretty much do the same thing. Oh, the Lord wants me to do that. And the Lord wants me to do this. I, I had it better when I was living for myself. That is a lie. That is a deception from the devil. It is not a better life. I've, I've lived in both worlds. Living for Jesus. You can't beat it. There is nothing better than living for Jesus. Amen. He says, repent, turn, turn from that. Turn from where, he, where you have failed him by losing that first love. He says, turn, repent, turn from that. Come back to me. This is what he's saying. He says, if we don't, he will quickly leave us to do our own will. That's what he's talking about. And he doesn't mean our salvation. He's meaning his will. We need to repent from not doing his will to obeying and seeking his will for us. I would hate to know that I was not under the protection of my Lord. Because when he leaves us, we have no protection. He's not there to protect us any longer when we leave him. I don't want that. I... It gives me such a rest, such a, such a peace that my Lord Jesus Christ looks over me, looks after me. And he has sent his angels to do the same. Amen. Praise God. Now the Lord is speaking to Christians that don't want to lose that first love. He says it. He says, okay, you don't want to lose that first love? This is what we do. Psalms 1-2. But his delight, speaking about David here, David wrote the, the book of Psalms. But his delight, David saying, his delight, which is the Lord, his delight is the word, is the law of the Lord. Which the law of the, of the Lord is the word. Amen. And in his word, doth he meditate 
day and night, day and night, all the time. And we can, Christians can do this because that's, that's pretty much me. I love meditating on his word day and night. I wake up thinking about his word, what he wants me to do. I go to bed at night thinking the same thing. And that's how we can escape living and losing that first love by living this way. Always thinking of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Many times Christians don't even think about the Lord until Sunday when they go to church. That's the only time they even think about the Lord is when they go to church. The Lord says right here, meditate on him day and night. Every day. Every day. Do this. But when you only go to church and that's the only church you have and that's the only time uh, you meet the Lord. We can't have victory in our life that way. The way we can have victory in our life, defeating the devil, is by getting closer, closer to our Lord. Please understand that. We need to quit doing our own thing. And many Christians do. You know, when you gave your life to the Lord, He said, I want all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind. All of it. He said all. But we have Christians. They say okay. But then after a little while. They're doing their own thing again. Jesus doesn't have all their heart. Soul and mind. They're doing their own thing. And they don't see nothing wrong with it. It's because they haven't. Cl gotten close enough. Seek the Lord enough. To realize. Hey there's more to Christianity. Than going to church. Church is good. I'm not putting down church. It's good if you got a man of God over that church. But church doesn't save you. Putting Jesus in your heart, that's what saves us. He said the time is near. Man, it is. I've had a teaching on it. We don't, I don't know. We don't know the day or the hour. But we do know the season. The Lord said we would know the season. And I, I definitely see that we're in this season. I definitely see that. I don't know if it's going to be today or tomorrow. Or if it's going to be another hundred years from now. But we're in this season. So Christians, when we wake up in the morning, we should say, Lord, you might come today. And if we, if we do that, we will walk closer to the Lord. Because if we're thinking he's coming today, believe me, we're going to put our best, best foot forward, right? So we should wake up every day thinking, today my Lord could come. Now, shine, it's the Lord that makes us shine. He says he wants us to shine, but the only way we can shine is through the Lord, only through him. Psalm 67, verse 1 God be merciful unto us, and believe me, he is very merciful to us, because what we deserve is hell. Every single one of us, we deserve hell. But he's given us mercy. He's given us grace. He's given us his love, and he has blessed us. Oh, believe me, he has blessed us. When you wake up in the morning, were you protected through the night while you were sleeping? Did you wake up in the morning breathing that the air he gives us? Did you wake up in the morning able to see, able to hear, able to speak? These are all blessings. You got a lot of people who don't have these blessings. Don't overlook the blessings of God and always be thankful for them. And this, he says, this will cause his face to shine upon us. Amen. Because we'll be happy. We'll be happy. We'll be waking up in the morning and realize we have all this and we'll be saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. That's when the light shines. Amen. That's when the light shines. When we're doing his will, when we're obeying him, praise God, when we're obeying him, not some of his words, all of his words. Amen. All of them. Second Peter 1.19 we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Amen. The Bible. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. 
Amen. Praise God. There is a sure word. Any other word. I don't care what book you have out there. There is no book that is more reliable, more truthful than the Bible. The words of God. Amen. And he tells it in 2 in uh, Timothy 3.16. He tells us all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. This Bible was written by man, but they were inspired on what to write. So we can't look at this Bible and say, oh, men wrote it. No. Yes, they wrote it physically, but the Lord God inspired them on what to write. And the reason he did that is because what the rest of the verse says. It says, the Bible is profitable for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. Amen. How many of us know once we become a born again Christian, we haven't been right, uh, walking in righteousness? Because it's been our own righteousness. But now, obeying his words, obeying him, seeking his will, now we know how to, rock, how to walk in righteousness. Amen. Praise God. He is so good to us. Praise God. And when he says until the day dawn, what he's talking about is Matthew 24, 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Praise God. Amen. Titus 2.13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to be looking. We need to look forward to his coming. Those of us who are walking with the Lord, we look forward to his coming. Because we're walking with him. But if you're not walking with the Lord, are you, are you looking forward to Him coming? That's a question for you. Christians who are doing the will of God, we can't wait to see our Lord. We can't wait to see our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. Amen. He will come for those who live for Him. He's coming back to the earth. And when he does, he's coming for those who are living and obeying him. People who reject him and don't obey his words because they just don't believe the Bible. Whatever the reason might be, he's not coming for them. He's coming for true born again Christians. For those who are looking forward to his coming. Amen. Praise the Lord. Waking up. This is what he meant when he said, the day store arises in your heart. In your heart. When you, bring, when you wake up and you have Jesus in your heart and that's who you want to please is Jesus. Amen. That arises and that makes us want to walk with him and obey him. Oh, praise God. It's going to take a true born again Christian, a true born again Christian who is hungry for his words, who want to grow, who want to know what's right and wrong, who are waking up and are ready to take a stand for their Christianity, for the Lord. This country is totally getting out of hand. The devil is totally taking over this well, the world, but this country he's taken over. We need to be able to stand and we need to be able to say, no, no. You're not going to teach my, my child that he can be a boy or a girl or she can be a boy or a girl. You're not going to teach that to my children. It's not a choice. It's not their choice. God already made that choice when he, when he made them. God makes babies. He made them boy or a girl. That's the way God did it. And no, we do not have the choice. Well, if you want to be a boy... And you're a girl, you can be a boy. No, that is of the devil. The world is teaching our kids they can do that. And we need to take a stand and say, no, no, that is against my Lord. We need to say no to the, to the schools. We need to say no to whoever, whoever is trying to push that. No. It's like drugs. You teach your children to say no to drugs. Well, we need to say no to the world when they're trying to take our kids over. Showing them the way of the devil. 
as a church, we have failed. The church has listened to the government. When the government told them during, during the coronavirus to, to close the churches down, to close them down, what they were saying, hey, y'all need to stop praising and worshiping the Lord. That's what they were saying. I mean, they use corona, but that they've been, the world, the devil wants these churches down, closed, because we preach Jesus. Bound down to what they said. When we obey anyone else, person, organization, whatever, when we obey them instead of the Lord, we're bound down to them instead of bound down to the Lord. Hope you understand what I'm saying. We need to stand. We need to stand. And when the uh, the government or whoever tells us we need to stop or start doing something if it's against, if it's against the word of god we need to say no i am a christian i am a child of god and my i live for my father and his will amen that's where we need to be and the only way we can do that people is through the power of the holy spirit the spirit of god that lives in us and the only way you're going to have that is truly accepting the lord in your heart you don't get that until you give the Lord all your heart, soul, and mind. Now, the Lord wants to point out to us about churches failing. He wants to point it out. In the book of Jonah, Jonah, people think of Jonah, they think of the well. well the book of Jonah is not about a well, it's about a man fleeing. Fleeing, running away from what the Lord has told him to do. He didn't want to do it. So he's running from the Lord. And he, he goes into a ship. And while he's on that ship, a, a strong storm. It comes. And the men on the ship started to pray. But they started to pray to, to their God. Small g. In fact, Jonah chapter 1 verse 5 says, Then the marinas... Mariners were afraid and crowded every man onto his God. They were crying out to their God, their God. When their God didn't hear them, didn't do anything, and there's many gods that people worship today that are dead. So they started to try to save themselves. By rowing harder. That's what it says in verse 13. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring it to land. Like I said, their God didn't answer them. So they said, okay, we need to do it on our own. But they could not, for the sea wroth and was temperous against them. They started to make their own way of salvation. That's pretty much what, they were, what this is showing. We have men who do that today. We have people who believe that today. They believe, well, if my good outweighs my bad, I'll go to heaven. Is that, the word, is that what the Word of God says? Read the Word of God. Then you'll know for sure, absolutely, what's going to get you to heaven. Amen? We can't fight the Lord. These men tried. The Lord made this storm. And they tried to fight it, and they couldn't. Don't fight the Lord, people. But then we see in the next verse, verse 16. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Amen. This is us today. When we don't hear from God that we pray to, well, it's time to leave that God. It's time to leave him and say, okay, Jonah, you're God. We want to pray to your God. Because our God didn't hear us. Our God didn't answer us. And we failed at trying to do it our way. So they said, They feared the Lord exceedingly and offered sacrifice unto him and made vows. Amen? Listen to me, people. When you belong to whatever religion, and the religion you belong to, that God doesn't hear your prayers, He doesn't answer your prayers, it's time to find another religion. It's time to find the true living God, Jehovah God. 
the God, the Father of Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is a living, the, the living God. If this is one of us, if this is one of us, we need to show our loyalty to the Lord by either being loyal to our religion or to whatever man you listen to who's really not feeding you but telling you stories. Is our loyalty to Him or is our loyalty to God, to Jesus our Lord, the words of God? He already knows, but He wants you to show yourself. Where am I at here? Where am I at? Am I listening to the words of God? Am I? Or am I going by what my church says or what my preacher says? That doesn't come from the scriptures. Hope you understand what I'm saying. Now, those of you who go to church, I pray that we're not like these people in the, in the book of Luke. These people went to church in Luke chapter 4, verse 28. And all they in the synagogue, meaning church, when they heard these, this is Jesus speaking. Jesus. <laughs> you can't be a better preacher or a teacher than Jesus, okay? But it says, when they heard these things from him, they were filled with wrath. They were angry. They didn't like what Jesus was saying. This is Jesus preaching. They didn't like it. And this is why many times churches today, we have preachers that don't give the truth. Because they don't want people getting mad at them. Because if they get mad at them, they'll either leave or they won't give their 10% to the church. And they don't like that. So we have preachers today that won't give you the whole counsel of God. Like Paul said, Paul said when he preaches, he's going to give you the whole counsel of God. Amen. And praise God, that's what he's put on me. I preach to y'all the words of God. And you leave the church, I, there's nothing I can do about that. If you get mad, there's nothing I can do about it. But I'm going to give you the word of God. I know when God steps on my toes, when he offends me, hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I didn't know that. I say thank you because I want to grow in my Christian walk with him. Now, down in verse 32, we could be like these Christians. It says in verse 32, and they were astonished. They were amazed at his teaching. Amen. That's me. Oh, I love to hear the words of God. It teaches me and I love hearing them. For his word was with power. Power. You're not going to fall asleep when Jesus is speaking. Because his word is with power. We have preachers today. They preach through college know-how. Through college knowledge using big words and you find people falling asleep he's not reaching them in the spirit we need a man of God who's going to preach in the power of the Holy Spirit amen someone who's going to preach the truth to us amen that's what we need so there's two ways to receive the word of God either hate it or receive it with gladness amen with gladness with joy thank you Jesus I needed to hear that when the Lord preaches to me, oh, praise God, praise God. I used to go to a Bible study on Friday nights, on Friday nights. I remember what I used to do on Friday nights, and there wasn't no Bible study. But when I got born again, and a friend of mine introduced me to a teacher over in Beaumont, he taught, he started like 7.30, and most time he wasn't through till 10.30. But he fed me the Word of God. He fed me the word I was hungry for. I was want to grow. I was want to know the truth. And I didn't fall asleep. Didn't fall asleep. He was feeding me. And that's what preachers and teachers do. That's their, that's their responsibility is to feed the sheep of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Get closer to Jesus. Refuse to listen to the lies that the devil uses to deceive us. 
because because we live under the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. We live under his authority, under his word. Uh, listen to me. John 15, verse 19. Speaking to, to Christians here, this is Jesus speaking. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. What he's saying, if you were of the world, the, the world's going to love you. It's going to love you because you're like them. And it says, but because you are not of the world, but I have chosen out, I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. If your walk in life is pleasing the world, then you're not pleasing the Lord. If you're pleasing the Lord with your walk, the world's going to hate you. They're going to hate you because they don't understand. They don't understand why you're still full of joy like my little girl. I give her as an example. My first little girl, she went to be with the Lord at five years old. That was my first little girl. And I got on my knees and I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, as far as I'm concerned, my life is over. If you want me to keep going, you're going to have to totally carry me. Amen. Here I am today because of my Lord. Because of my Lord. People didn't understand the next Sunday when I was in church. I were praising the Lord in songs. And I got my, li my hands lifted up to him. He just lost his little girl. Uh, excuse me. I didn't lose her. I know exactly where she's at. She's in heaven with the Lord. Amen. Praise God. But people don't understand that. And a lot of other things they don't understand. They don't understand why Christians give when they need. Well, that's what our Lord says. If you need, give. Amen. <laughs> they don't understand and they don't like us because they do not understand the way we live now. <laughs> Those who give from the heart. Give from the heart. Not because I've said this and because it is in the word of God. Don't start giving because you want. Then you got the wrong motive. Then you got the wrong heart. But when you give because you have the love of God in you, amen, then he's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. Amen. Since we live for him now, <laughs> since we live for him now, like I said, well, like he said, the world hates us. The world does not like us. The world does not want to be around us. Because for one thing, if you're a true, true born again Christian, you're going to want to talk about your father in heaven, God. Amen. Praise the Lord. If we're not living this way, we still want to do the things of the world. The Lord tells us in Revelations chapter 3, verse 15. No, chapter 3, verse 15 through 16. This is Jesus speaking. I know thy works. Thou art neither cold nor hot. He's speaking to Christians. I would thou wert cold or hot. Verse 16. So then because thou art lukewarm, because you're not hot or cold, you're lukewarm. He says, you're neither cold or hot. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Oh my gosh. Because you can't make up your mind if you want to be a Christian or live for yourself, live for the world, live for the uh, friends. That's all living for the devil. If you know the words of God, this is what you're doing. And you're cold. Being hot, <laughs> being a hot Christian is meditating on, meditating on him day and night. Walking with him. Jesus is rebuking them for, for not being cold or hot. For being lukewarm. Christians or lost people, whoever's listening to me. Make up your mind. If you're a Christian, don't be a Christian just on Sunday or when you're around other Christians. And then when you're around your lost friends, you act lost. You might be doing things you shouldn't be doing, but you're with lost people, so that's what you do. That's not being a Christian. That's, that's being cold. That's what the Lord calls it, cold. Cold to Him. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Yes, I want to give all my heart to the Lord and start living for Him. Not my church, not my family, 
not my friends, not the devil, because they're all the same thing, especially if you belong to a church that doesn't preach the word of God. You may, you need to make up your mind, I'm going to read the scriptures and believe the scriptures. That's what I did. When I got born again, when I saw, I went to a movie, and it's called Jesus, and it showed the life of Jesus, and it showed how he suffered tremendously and how he, how they put him on the cross. And when I left that movie, I thought, I don't know anything. And I didn't. I didn't know anything about born again or saved. But I knew one thing. I knew I wanted to live for Jesus. That's who I wanted to live for. And I turned, and He turned my life around. Amen? Amen? He turned my life around. That's walking with the Lord. That's walking with the Lord. Now when you say, okay, uh, you know, okay, I'm, I'm going to start going to church on Sunday because I believe in God. Believing in God doesn't save you. Going to church doesn't save you. I've told you before, the devil himself believes in God. Church doesn't save you. Jesus Christ, he's the one that saves us. He's the one that opens our eyes and sees and shows us that we're lost and that we need him. Because the Bible says they're drawn by the Spirit. By the Spirit. By the Spirit of God, we're drawn to Him. And then that's when we make up our mind, well, do I want to live His way or do I want to live my way? That's it. Like I said, high Christians are the ones who are growing, who, who seek God's will, who want to walk a spiritual walk. When you're, when you're cold, you have no interest whatsoever in the Word of God. You have no Bible study, you don't read the Bible, and you might go to church someday. You might go to church every Sunday, but that doesn't help, help you to walk with the Lord because you haven't received them in your heart. Please understand what I'm saying. Lukewarm Christian. You live both ways. And when you live both ways, it makes them sick. This is the word of God. This is not coming from me, Jesse. But I agree with him. Because what he's saying is true. Is true. Obey him or don't obey him. Period. That's it. Obey him. Do his will. Or don't obey him. Obey him. And do your own will. Because when you're lukewarm, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. You receive the scriptures you like. That's okay, but then you refuse and ignore the scriptures that you don't like. That's lukewarm. Now Elijah said, he said it pretty plainly in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. Amen? If the Lord is your God, Follow him. Because we have many small g gods. The devil, which I've already shown you through the scripture, that the devil is the god of this world right now. Or you can be your own god, doing your own thing. But he, but he says, if the Lord be God, follow him. Amen? Praise God. But if Baal, which means the devil, but if you're following him, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. They didn't answer him a word, a word because they didn't know. They didn't know what they were doing. When you're living a born-again Christian life, you know what you're doing. You know that the Lord is God Almighty, Lord of your life. Amen? You know. You don't have to think about it. But they couldn't answer him a word because they didn't know. Because they are more religious than Christians. There's a big difference between being a religious person and being a Christian. We need to remember, if you've read your Bible, if you've read your Bible, it was the religious people who put Jesus on the cross. Oh, the Romans did it physically, but it was because the religious people went to the Romans and said, this man must be killed. Religious people. Religious people live by traditions. Christians live by the word of God. Amen? 
Praise the Lord. They live by the way, by the word of God. We need to remember that. The Lord tells us, watch who we listen to. Because there are many deceivers out there. He keeps saying that there's many deceivers out there. Matthew 24, 4. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Take heed that no man, man, deceive you. We're talking about false preachers, false teachers. Now when a man is speaking to you and he's speaking the words of God. And he doesn't take the word of God out of context. Then you know, okay, this man we can listen to. Because this man has the gift of either preaching or teaching. We got a lot of preachers and teachers out there that are false. They shouldn't be preaching and they shouldn't be teaching because they don't know the word of God. The Lord said in the last days, the last days, he said, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Those evil men are not the ones we look at as lost sinners. Those evil men that he's speaking about are the men that are preaching in the church, that are false. That's what he's speaking about. These are the men that look godly. They look like they're Christians. They're leaders of the church. This is the evil man he's speaking about that are, de are, that are deceiving people. Let me say this, Christians that are halfway serving the Lord, just halfway serving the Lord, they're of little threat to the devil. The devil really doesn't pay much attention to them because they're just halfway walking with the Lord. The ones he's deceiving are those of us, those of us who walk with the Lord. He's doing every he can, everything he can to deceive us. They have Christians out there that are, well, I, I, you know, Christians, you either are a Christian and you're being deceived, or you never was a Christian, and you thought you was. But now that you're hearing the words of God, you realize, and maybe in time past, you told others of the way you felt you were a Christian because of religious stuff. Deceiving and being deceived. We need to quit listening to the lies of the devil. And the only way we, we can know the lies of the devil is by studying the words of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. These false preachers and teachers can seem to be like real men of God. They can. They can seem like they're real men of God. But the Lord said, the Lord said, now get this, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 and 15. Verse 14 and no marvel. The Lord saying, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. And no marvel. For Satan, the devil, himself is transformed into an angel of light. Into a man of God. A preacher. A teacher. Did y'all hear this? The devil can transform himself into a man of God. Verse 15. Therefore, if... Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, and who's the ministers of the devil? They're the demons, but they're called ministers. But they're demons. All, they can also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. The Lord calls the devil and his demons ministers. Did y'all hear that? Did read this verse. These two, read them. They're called ministers. Meaning they're preachers or teachers who seem to be men of God. They have transformed their evilness into goodness. Acting, not from the heart, but acting that they're Christians. But the Lord says at the end, they will get what they deserve. Hell was made for the devil and his demons. That's what hell was made for. But since we have people today who are being deceived, since we have people today who just reject the Lord, the Lord is like, well, if you're going to act like the devil, then you go to the same place that I'm sending to the devil and his demons, to hell. Like I said before, 
I don't live for the Lord because I don't want to go to hell. Because I don't want to go to hell. But that's not why I live for the Lord. I live for the Lord because he is so loving, so loving to us. And he's always ready to forgive us. All we have to do is ask for forgiveness and repent of whatever wickedness, whatever sin we were doing. Amen. He says, all you need to do is repent from your heart. Confess it and repent and I will forgive you. And not only will I forgive you, the Lord says, I won't remember it no more. Amen. Praise God. So Christians, listen to me, Christians. When you have sinned and you ask the Lord to forgive you and you've repented and you're walking with the Lord again. Believe me, the devil's going to throw that sin back into your face. And, you're, and, and what we say is, hey, the Lord has forgiven me. Amen. The Lord has forgiven me. You can't use that to hurt me, to make me look bad. Oh, living for Jesus, living for the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. There is no greater life than living for the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your words. Thank you that you correct us. That's what your word is for, is to correct us. Because we're not perfect. But if we want to be like you, we need correction. We need you to show us when we're right, when we're wrong. So thank you, Father, that you love us so much. You love us so much that you let us know that sometimes, sometimes, just like real parents have to spank their kids, well, sometimes, Lord, you have to spank us. And that's totally okay with me because I live for you. You are my father. You are my spiritual father, and that's the way I look at you, as my father. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for the, these words, and thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen.